So whether you work from home all day or you're just super involved in your project, you probably need a reminder like I do to go get some water. So today we're gonna use Python to build us a OS specific notification system that can remind us to get some water. And it's gonna sound and look something like this. So pay attention to the this section of the screen because that's where the notification is gonna come in, at least on a Mac. And we'll go ahead and run it. Get some water! And just like that, that is our notification built in using the default um, OS, the Mac OS styled notification, and it even screams at us. So let's go ahead and build it. All right, so we're gonna need a couple packages to do this desktop notification. And the one main package that you're gonna need is gonna do pip install and then desktop desktop dash notifier and then hit enter and that should install everything to do the desktop notification now i already have it installed and again when doing these projects i highly recommend that you use a virtual environment like i have here i'm, I'm putting everything into this virtual environment called biz env if you want to learn more about virtual environments i can leave kind of like a card up here that you can click in and it shows you what how you can create one and why they're valued essentially they just allow you to have everything in one spot and it's you know doesn't conflict between different projects that you do um, okay, so now that we have that out of the way, we can go ahead and we can go and do import, or well, we're gonna do a couple things. So first we need to use a built-in library as well, and that's called async, async IO. Now this is gonna allow us to do asynchronous function calls. I'll explain a little bit more here in a little bit, but that is essentially what is needed to use kind of the um, built-in OS notification layer um, that's on the operating system. So we're gonna use that. And then from here, we're gonna say from desktop notifier, and then we're gonna say import, and then we need to import a few things. We're gonna say notification, um, and we're gonna say default sound, or yeah, yeah default sound, because we'll show that here. And then we'll import anything else as we need okay so that should be everything that we need to do for our imports now let's go ahead and jump into kind of creating the code that does the notification all right before we just add the code that we need to do the actual notification i forgot that um it's not notification that's what's being used it's called the default um or the desktop notifier and then we also need to do not only the default sound but if we want to do a custom sound which we'll get into here in a little bit we also need to import the sound the sound library okay now with that out of the way kind of bring this down a little bit so we can kind of see and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do my main guard kind of just to create our program. And I have a little uh, VS Code snippet that I wrote um, called if name. And when I hit if name, whoops, and hit enter, it generates this piece of code for me. It's really nice and handy. And so now we're gonna do is say notifier, notifier is equal to desktop notifier. All right, and then we need to basically create an async um, or yeah, async IO. And then we need to call that to run. And then we need to run some asynchronous function. And in this case, we're just gonna call main. And then we're gonna have main though, take in our notifier, right? So that we can do um, the actual notification. So just like that, that's kind of our base setup for the application, other than the fact that we are missing this main function. So let's get into that. So that main function, like I said, since we're using asynchronous IO, and then again, this is needed because of the um, the default OS you know, layer that we're going to access or that the library accesses for us, it needs this capability to run asynchronous code, meaning basically you can go off and run, and then we can do like an async and a wait, which allows us to kind of pause and wait for that stuff to execute and run before then returning back and continuing on. Um, that's very high level. Uh, but essentially, we, to do that, we need to say an as, we need to create an async function, async def, and then what we called it main, and that passed in a notifier. And then with this, what we're gonna call is await. Now this basically tells us to, hey, wait for return. If you've done any like front end programming um, that, where you know, you're making like HTTP request calls and stuff like that, this is kind of where that comes from is like, you know, you'll have it call out to a certain place, it goes and executes, returns back, and then once it returns back, we can kind of continue execution. Um, but essentially we need to call wait, and then we need to say the notifier, dot send and then what we're going to do send and then we're going to pass in the information that we want it to send so in this case we're going to give it a few things so we're going to say that our title is going to equal and in this case like i mentioned we're going to do a water break thing so we're going to say this is water break exclamation point right then we're going to say the message that we want to pass in is going to equal, and there's a lot of parameters that you can do like you can change the urgency you can change the icon if you want um, you could add buttons to do some reply stuff um, but the things that we're going to focus on this video maybe we'll get into some more in another video but today we're going to focus on mostly the title of the message um and the sound and then maybe we'll play with the urgency as well but the message is set we're going to say is like go get some water 
All right, now, if I were to just do this, I need to put some commas in here, or else that's not gonna work, because those are parameters. All right, so if I should just do this, this should send, if I go ahead and go uh, Python, water, uh, water reminder. Uh, if we watch, now on a Mac, it's different. On, for th again, this desktop notifier accesses the OS level notification system. So on a Mac, on my machine, it's going to notify here. I think on a Windows, it's probably the bottom, it's gonna be down here in this bottom right. Um, and then I'm not, can't remember where Linux says it as well. But over here is where it's going to pop in. So this should be the bare enough code to give us the notification with the title and the message. So if I go ahead and run it, and just like that, we see that the notification comes in. Um, and you'll notice that like there's like it's not going away at all. It's just there. Um, Python, I think be, there's some built-in stuff with the OS with Mac security that it doesn't allow um, notifications to be cleared by um, an application, just probably for security concerns. Because I even tried, there's a timeout function and I tried doing like timeout um, equals like two because it says, or you know, two or three. And this is supposed to clear it, but um, it doesn't. Uh, but that's just on Mac. It may work on Windows. So if you want it to go away, maybe try doing the timeout function. So if I want to clear it, I have to go up here and click clear. Now, the first time that this runs on your machine on your Mac, you'll probably get a notification saying, hey, do you want to allow notifications from this um, this application? So you'll want to click yes. Um, otherwise, you may not, it may go away. The other thing I want to point out, um, or they may not show up. The other thing I want to point out is, for example, if I come up here and on my Mac and I do um, do not disturb, if this is on at all, like always on, if you notice when I go ahead and run this, it nothing pops up. But if I were to click my notification center, you will see that, hey, it's right there. In the notification center. And that's just because I think of the default, like I, I think this has to play with urgency um, and, it, and just being in do not disturb. So it's not gonna disturb you with those notifications. So if you want the no notifications, make sure that this is off, that the do not disturb is off. Now, if I go ahead and run this again, you'll see, boom, just like that, we have our notification. It says, hey, go get go get some water, get a water break. So now let's talk about adding sound. So to add sound, it's basically adding a parameter. So we can say so the sound is equal to, and then we can just do default sound. Now, what this default sound is technically is um, it's a sound object, which is why we imported this, because I'll show you that here in a minute. But if I go ahead and run this now, and you'll, you'll hear that it chimes, because that's kind of the default notification sound for Mac OS. And we'll go ahead and run it. And just like that, you heard that chime, right? That's the default chime um, for Mac. Um, so that's the base layer of just adding sound. Like, hey, you, you get notified via visually up here as you're, work, say you're working, or you can also add the sound. Now, if you want to add a custom sound, um, it gets a little tricky, at least on a Mac. I don't know on a Windows or Linux, but um, on a Mac, I'll kind of show you how you can do it with a custom sound. And before we get into custom sound, I just kind of noticed something that this was kind of uh, dimmed, as you would say, in the in the um, in VS Code. And I was like, what the heck? That shouldn't be dimmed because I'm using it, but I'm not. This is a different variable right here. And the only reason that this code right now was working and is because I miss had a misspelling because sometimes I don't spell right. But because Python and its scoping level I had named it different down here and it was using this one and so it was still able to use it So I just want to get that out of the way like um, it was using the kind of like a more of a globally scope thing than it was actually doing the um, Actual the the function scoped name that I was trying to have it use so that's that but now let's get into custom sounds like um, I just want to point that out in case someone's like why are we not even using that variable but we were supposed to it's just Python and scoping and my bad spelling we got lucky in that case um, but now custom sounds so default sound is just a variable and default sound is a variable that is based off of the sound class which is as what we imported here which is what I was talking about earlier now to use a custom sound you basically just have to create a sound object and then you can see from the IntelliSense, it says, hey, pass in the path or UI or give it a name, right? Or pass the name. From this, I was thinking, oh, perfect. Well, if I do ls in my folder here, you can see that I have multiple different files in here. I have two Python files, which this is this one right here is our actual script that we're running. And then a bunch of audio, different audio ones, right? Well, I initially created this water.m4a using the voice notes or the voice memos application on my Mac to create the, this get water function or water custom sound, which get some water! basically just yells at us telling us get some water, right? Um, but then I was like, oh, hey, we should probably, because I don't know, 
what this package supports. So I was like, we probably either want to convert this to an MP3 or a wave. So I tried MP3 first and I tried a wave by just doing simply something like, um, you can do dot slash and then you can say, and I'm just gonna use the get water example dot wave. Um, as well as you could also say path is equal to this. Now, this is where it gets a little tricky on a Mac. On Windows, and I think Linux, I'm not 100% sure on Linux, this should work just fine um, to use the custom to use the custom sound. Um, but if I run this, what you'll notice is that we get the notification, but we don't get the custom sound on a Mac. So how do we go about and fix that? Well, let me talk, let me show you how to do that right now. So on a Mac, to actually do the custom sound, I had to actually dig into this package and see what it's doing. What I found was, um, and actually like maybe we just go on the journey with me. You can go on the journey with me. Um, if we click into these different files and then different resources, um, and then actually I think I was in custom desktop and then yeah, this guy, backends. And then if you go into the Mac OS, that's what it was. So in the package, so now we're digging into the guts, right? So essentially, if you come down to the send function, it comes to this section of code right here where it says, hey, if you have a sound notification and it's not null or empty or anything or none, then we're gonna say, hey, if sound, if the notification is just sound, play the default sound, right? But if, if sound is there and it has a name, then we're gonna go ahead and we're going to run this section of code. And basically what this is going to do is grab a sound file from your user's library sounds folder. Now that path is basically, uh, if you in a terminal, you do ls tilde or tilde slash library sounds, it's right here. So I went and basically moved or copied my wave file that was screaming at us to get some water and I put it in here, right? So then I was like, okay, cool. Well, let me just do this then. Like I'll just do get, get wave, get water dot wave, right? And run, run um, our script. And yet again, there is the notification, but no sound. Then I dug into it a little bit um, further and found that in this sound file, it is only doing it if you do the name is equal to get water dot wave. So now if I go ahead and run this, you'll see that get some water. we got the notification and we got the sound. So if you're on a Mac, that is how to use this um, desktop notification or desktop notifier um, to one build a build a um, notification a custom notification and we could do some other things like we could add an icon or we could do um, stuff like that but basically here's the basic thing it gives us a OS the Mac or you know if you're on Windows and you know your specifics OS notification system it gives us the title and it gives us whatever message we want and now we have the ability to, to do custom sound all right so that's pretty cool and and then you can take this even one step further and you could either um, have a script that runs and um, has a timer in it that just every 15 minutes goes off or every set time it goes off or you could take it one step further and um and i mean i guess you could update this this script right here to you know to sleep and then come awake every 15 minutes or you could do a cron job um, that basically sets up a little thing on your machine and then you tell how you know how often you want it to, to awake and from what time range you want it to awake and to run this script and then it would run this script and yell at you to get some water or whatever you are trying to get notified about so i hope you found this helpful if you did please leave a comment below. If you want to see me setting up a cron job for this, um, type in cron in the comments below and I, we can go ahead and we can show you how you can set up a cron job. Um, but until next time, keep on programming.